Welcome back to our gardening special, everyone. Well, many of us know about companion gardening, and this technique has roots deep in Indigenous knowledge. Carson Arthur is back to explore that with us now. So, Carson, are there specific vegetables that are used traditionally for this? Oh, Tracy, we are going OG, old school with this one. The original companion gardeners were the Iroquois Nation. They loved growing in their summer months, and they grew three things in particular. They were called the Three Sisters. That included corn, beans, and squash. Now, corn was used for the height. The beans were used because they like to trellis up the corn, and they actually create more pollination, so you get more corn. And the squash was used for shade around the base of the actual clump. It was a fantastic combination, and it's the original companion planting that we still do today. And the whole, the whole thing of companion, companion planting is that these plants together will thrive better than on their own. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. They all provide something to the soil that the other plant needs. Some case, it's the shade so that there's less dehydration. So in this case, the squash actually creates more shade around the base. So that means the soil isn't being exposed to sunlight. It doesn't dry out as fast. The corn, which is very important for indigenous cooking, was actually the trellis, which means the beans use the corn to get higher up. And at the same time, the flower of the beans, which is so highly scented, so bright color, brings more native pollinators in to pollinate the squash and the corn. So they work in harmony together. Isn't nature amazing? Okay, now is there a specific order these three sisters should be planted? Yeah, and that's very important. The order is key, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. So these bamboo stakes are gonna represent my corn. You wanna plant your corn right now. Even if it's cold in your area, even if there's frost still expected, corn can handle it. So you're planting right now. And you're gonna plant your corn kind of like this. So you wanna plant it in a triangle, about a foot to a foot and a half apart. So each three stake, or each three corn cobs. Now, as the corn grows, you wanna tie up the top. This makes your trellis for the beans. In about two weeks, after the corn gets established and it gets nice and tall, you're gonna start your beans. You plant your beans in little rings around the corn. So you're gonna plant it in rings around like this. So each one of these corn stalks represents the trellis for the beans and they're gonna start coming up. Now the squash is key. You do not wanna plant squash until the frost or the threat of frost is over. Planting the squash around everything will create the shade that you're looking for. That gives you your three sister structure and I promise you'll be amazed at how much food you actually can produce in such a small space. Beautiful. Okay, you have another variation of this type of garden, don't you? You know I do. I wanted to add a little zhuzh to it. So we got three <laughs> more things. So instead of corn, Let's do sunflowers. A lot of people are growing sunflowers this year in support of what's happening overseas. So sunflowers, traditional national flower of Ukraine, works very well. Same thing, you're going to actually use them as your trellis. Climbing up your sunflowers, we're gonna do peas. Peas and sunflowers are very happy together and everybody loves peas. And then finally, at the base of your structure, cucumbers. I mean, what could be better than cucumbers? Everybody loves cucumbers. Those three works fantastic in the garden, exactly the same as the three sisters. Is, and do we need to do those in a certain order as well? Follow the exact same order as the original three sisters, your sunflowers first, then your peas, then your uh, cucumbers. Now, Tracy, I do have one more for you for all the people not planning to grow vegetables this year. Or maybe you live on a condo or a rooftop. Tracy, I got some flowers just for you. Okay, what kind of variation might work in that kind of a space? Yeah, not only are they gonna work in a small space, I have a large flower pot here that they would fit into. See this flower pot? They would work fantastic in this. So in this flower pot, to encourage pollinators, bumblebees, butterflies, start with hollyhocks. Hollyhocks are a late blooming flower, which means they're gonna feed birds and bees at the end of the fall season. Using the hollyhocks for height, we're gonna plant some Sweet pea. Sweet pea is so fragrant. It brings in hummingbirds and monarch butterflies and all of the butterflies that actually like to feed from nectar and pollen. And then finally, at the bottom, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna plant flowering tobacco. Flowering tobacco is such an amazing nighttime scent. It just adds a little spice. Luna moths and all of the endangered species love this. So in your pot, start with your hollyhocks, wait two weeks, then plant your sweet peas, wait two weeks, plant your tobacco. This can go on your condo balcony, at your front door, on a rooftop garden. 
the pollinators will find it because they love the smell of these plants. Very interesting combo there. I'm just wondering, is there any specific soil you need to use in that planter when you're doing this kind of a variation? That's a great question. Whenever you're choosing soil for containers, knowing that the sun is going to bake on the side of the planter, you want a, con a soil container mix specifically designed for moisture retention. Because so much more sun hits the side of the pot, everything inside dries out that much faster. So you're looking for soil that has lots of perlite or vermiculite to keep everything moist in here. Even though we're planting a lot of indigenous species, our temperatures have gone up a lot in the last little while. So make sure to put something in there that's going to hold the water to keep your plants happy.